Hi, my name is Joanne Abdo, the coordinator for Croatia Fest Virtual Festival 2021. Today we will be visiting the town of Gig Harbor, Washington, located an hour south of Seattle, Washington, across the Narrows Bridge from Tacoma. We will be visiting the historical museum, a fishing vessel, and the Scanzi net shed. Along the way, we will be interviewing locals uh, from Gig Harbor of Croatian American descent, and they will be sharing their stories and traditions. I hope you enjoy our segment. Here we are at the Harbor History Museum in Gig Harbor, Washington, and we are here with curator and director Stephanie Lyle. She's going to give us a tour today mm -hmm. of the museum, tell us some stories of the first settlers here in Gig Harbor who were Croatians. Uh, let's go ahead and take a tour. Okay, it's let's so fun it to out. have you here. All Come right, on. thank you. Yeah. Welcome. Well, welcome to the Harbor History Museum. We're so excited to have everyone here and to share a little bit of the founding of Gig Harbor and our Croatian history. Uh, but it's really important to remember that Gig Harbor was occupied before any of the Croatians actually arrived. There was a large village here called Tualkush, and the people that lived here were the Squabopsh people who were a band of the Puyallup tribe. Squabopsh means swift water people, which makes a lot of sense when you look out the mouth of the harbor at the swift water running through the Narrows Bridge uh, passageway there. So Gig Harbor is this wonderful little space, and uh, people say that Sam Jerisic discovered it in 1867 when he was down here fishing. Now that's quite possible. There's slight alterations to that account. Some say it was a dark stormy night. Some people say he was just fishing. Um, but really, uh, we don't know that for sure. Um, so, and as a historian, I have to have evidence of this kind of thing. So I look back to every, uh, every source and unfortunately Sam never left a really, really specific um, designation of like how he came upon Gig Harbor. Uh, there are retellings of that story in various versions. So, uh, but we do know that he arrived here between 1867 and 1870 uh, because we have found some census records that, and immigration records that suggested his wife, Anna, who was a First Nations woman from the Penalaka tribe in uh, uh, just south of Vancouver, right around Vancouver, Canada. Uh, she came to this area and um, with Sam and her daughter, Caroline, and uh, that was uh, immigration records at about 1870. So Sam Jerisic came to Gig Harbor about 1867. He was fishing with two of his crewmates from the big sailing ships that he had crewed on over the years uh, and came into Vancouver, Canada. They bought themselves a rowboat and they came southward through Puget Sound, uh, fishing and seining as they went. It was Sam Jerisic his crewmate, Peter Zlatoric, who uh, translated his, or Americanized his name to Peter Goldsmith because Latar is gold in Croatian, and John Farragut, who was a Spaniard who also crewed on, on sailing ships with Sam and Peter. So the, the three of them were fishing together. They come down here, and depending on the story, uh, it might have been a stormy night when they needed some place to stay. It may be that they just found this great little harbor and thought, wow, this would be a wonderful place to settle down. Well, they had ties in Vancouver, Canada, and uh, obviously went back up there. There was actually a large Croatian community in that area on the south bank of the Fraser River. And there is also um, a large native um, First Nations presence on the islands up there. And Sam uh, met and married a woman named Anna who uh, is from the Penelokut tribe. That's uh, now, it was Cupper Island and now it's called Penelokut Island. And they came down and settled in this area. There were actually three native people that came down with Sam and Peter and John. Um, and that was Anna who married Sam. Uh, her, her maiden name as we know it is Willish. And then uh, her daughter Caroline, who was about two at the time. And a third woman who was a little mysterious. Uh, her name is Millie and she wound up marrying Peter Goldsmith. She was about five years younger than Anna so she was actually Depending on which year we're able to document, she was somewhere between 8 and 11 years old when she actually came to this area. So she's my mystery person that I'm trying to find out more about because she, she I believe, was also Penelokut uh, from up uh, in the Vancouver, Canada island area. So anyway, so you have uh, three First Nations people from Canada 
uh, two of whom are married to Croatian men. So you've got this wonderful cross-cultural relationship happening. But then here in Gig Harbor, we also have the Squabopsh people who live in a large village right here on where the museum stands today, or right in this vicinity where Donkey Creek meets, the gig, meets gig Harbor proper. And um, I think that there was definitely a time where there was about 10 years where there weren't a lot of other settlers here. And so there was this relationship between the First, First Nations women, Anna and her daughter Caroline and Millie, uh, with some of the native people that were already living here. And I really think that because uh, these native women had skills and knew the landscape so much better than their um, husbands, they were able to survive. And I really made this bridge between cultures. And it's a pretty unique foundation for a city in America to have that, that connection. Right. Well, one little connection that a lot of people don't know about is between uh, Nikolai Bezmalinovich uh, and Pasco Dorotich and his son, John, and their daughter, Lena. So the story is essentially this. Um, Nick is Pasco Dorich's son-in-law. Uh, Pasco and his wife Maddie, who uh, actually grew up mostly in Canada. Uh, Pasco came to Canada when he was about 12 years old, and then he met his wife Maddie Gillich there, and they married, had two children, then came down to Gig Harbor about 1910, between 1910 and 1915. And another um, immigrant that came over from Croatia was this young, uh, tall, robust, uh, eager and excited individual named Nick. And Nick came, the story goes, that he came to America with like $15 in his pocket. And when he got to New York, he was swindled out of about $11. And so he had $4 left. And he took that $4 and he rented a rowboat and he went out and he fished and he came back in, he sold the fish, and with that money, he bought the rowboat. And then he continued to fish until he had enough money to come westward, which was his original plan. So he came out here, uh, fished in Alaska for a bit, uh, connected with the community in Tacoma, and then later Gig Harbor, and ultimately marries Pasco Dorich's daughter, Lena. Nick is kind of equated in Time Magazine, in Life Magazine, as the Horatio Alger of the Northwest. And uh, he uh, got his, his start really fishing, but he realized pretty quickly that the guys who were making the most money were the cannery owners. And so he bought his first cannery in Alaska in 1924. It was a kind of defunct cannery in, in Todd, Alaska. He borrows money, he buys that cannery, and the one thing that he really needed were tenders. And tenders are the boats that collect fish from the fish traps up near the mouth of the rivers up in Alaska and bring them to the cannery. So he talks to his brother-in-law, John Dorotich, his father-in-law, Pasco Dorotich, and they decide that they're gonna build a tender right here in Gig Harbor, and the name of that ship or the name of that fishing boat called Great Ship, um, named after an airship probably, as we have discovered, uh, is the Shenandoah. So the Shenandoah is in the collection here at the museum. And we look at these connections between these families and this enterprise that's actually happening. Uh, Nick Bez was known for continuing his relationship and building his relationship with Croatian fishermen uh, throughout the whole time that he owned canneries from that first cannery in 1924 until his death in about 1969. His last big cannery was called Peter Pan Seafoods and we still know that company today. And many of the Gig Harbor fishermen fished for both Peter Pan and Bumblebee in the times that Nick owned those companies. Okay, a lot of people ask us, what's the big deal about the Shenandoah? Well, this boat is a 65 foot wooden purseiner that was built in 1925 at the Scanzi shipyard. Um, the Scanzi brothers were from Croatia. Uh, they built it for Pasco Dorotich and his son John and his son-in-law Nick. And they were all from Croatia. So it's a Croatian built boat. It was fished by two Croatian families, because after the Dorotiches, the Genoviches ran the boat, and they were actually third cousins of, of the Dorotiches. So it has a very strong Cro Croatian tradition, um, not to mention the fact that it was actually built at, at Scanzi Shipyard under the tutelage of Sam Kaslin, 
who was the, the shop foreman also brought over from Croatia to help build these Scanzi boats that became so signature to our area. Um, Scanzi boat building uh, operated from about 1910 to about the 1940s when World War II broke out and really was an integral part of Gig Harbor's history. They weren't the first boat builders in the area. They were actually about the third or fourth, but definitely have a strong presence and their signature were two kinds of boats, Persainers and ferry boats. So they built some of the early car ferries here in Gig Harbor as well that ran the Gig Harbor to Tacoma route. Uh, those are very distinctive because that design has actually perpetuated through Washington history and the ferries we know today are very, very closely aligned design-wise to the early car ferries designed and built at Scanzi Shipyard in the mid to late 20s. So the Shenandoah was built for a man named Pasco Doritic. His story begins actually when he leaves Croatia. He's only about 12 years old and it's 1872. He sails across the Atlantic, comes to a community near Vancouver, Canada on the south bank of the Fraser River uh, called Ladner or Port Gushan. And Pasco grows up there. We don't know a lot of details about his life at that point, but we do know that he was married to a woman named Maddie Gillich and they had two children, John and Lena. Um, later, about between 1910 and 1915, Pasco, Maddie, John, and Lena moved to Gig Harbor, this wonderful new place that has this very strong Croatian community. And we think that because Maddie was Gillich, that might have been the draw because there was always a, already a Gillich family here. Now, Pasco was a fisherman by trade and also a boat builder. And his earlier boat was a boat called the St. John. In that wonderful tradition of naming boats after saints and your firstborn child, uh, St. John was uh, a, a, a smaller saner that actually could fish both down here in the sound, uh, in the Puget Sound area, as well as Alaska. Um, that boat actually continued to fish until the 1980s. Uh, and was lost at sea in a terrible accident where the entire crew was lost and drowned. But that aside, Shenandoah uh, has a life beyond and we call it the boat with three lives. First as a tender, uh, second as a saner, and third as a teacher here at the Harbor History Museum. So we're really taking an unusual approach to the conservation and restoration of the vessel uh, by taking the port side back to its 1925 original design adding uh, adding back the portholes that were there and redesigning the bulwarks to their original design and then this side that i'm standing on is actually going to be fully restored to about 1970 and be mid catch so you'll have a fish eyes view to look up at the catch being brought up in the net uh, to get that full experience of what it was like on board a croatian fishing vessel Probably with all of the sounds, the accents, everything, it's going to be wonderful. So uh, it's really exciting to be able to plan this out and see this restoration coming together. So. Here we are at the veteran fishing vessel with uh, skipper, veteran skipper, Mike Scrivenich. And uh, we are about to take a small tour on the boat today and talk to some uh, Croatian-American fishermen. Tell us a little bit about uh, the history of the veteran, please, Mike. Well, the veteran was built here in Gig Harbor uh, at the Scansi Ship Building, which is a Croatian-owned uh, ship building, uh, in 1926. And the boat was donated to the Gig Harbor Boat Shop uh, about five years ago. And so we've been, uh, with all volunteer work, we've been doing all the maintenance and painting. And uh, it's, as you can see, it's it's just a gorgeous boat, with a classic style, per se, boat. I think they built about 50 of them here in Gig Harbor, and there's only a few left. And so we got to keep this one. We got to keep this one pristine, so for the for the history. Well, thank you so much, Mike. Let's uh, hop on board. Okay, right, thank you. Go. We'll go the eldest first. Oh yeah, eldest. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I'm Mike Michael Scrivenich, and uh, born and raised in Gig Harbor. And started commercial fishing actively as a teenager in 1964, and. Uh, Fished for quite a few years with my dad on our boat out of the harbor here for salmon, almost almost exclusively Puget Sound. And uh, then I fished with my cousin Ralph Sulich in, in Bristol Bay for 14 years. And that, that was a real good <clears throat> fishery for me because it was always before 
the fishery down here, so the timing was good for me to go from one to the other. It was awesome, so it worked out really good. So, yeah, my grandfather came to Gig Harbor, like I said, in 1909, and so we've just been here a long time. So, like, like all of us, probably. Yeah. Nick Babish, I actually started when I was 12, and. Uh, Still fishing, 45 years later, but uh, well, I'll turn 13 on my dad's boat in Alaska, and then we had the unfortunate happening of where he, he left us, so I actually started fishing with my little brother, which isn't supposed to be the way it goes. He's supposed to fish with me, but I realized that he knew a hell of a lot more about fishing than I did, so I don't think so anymore. He probably does, <laughs> but uh, now we fish in... Uh, Southeast Alaska, we do squidding in uh, California. And, um, it's kind of same old, same old, same routine every year and hope for the best, but we'll hope for better than last year. <laughs> yeah, I'm Andy Babich, uh, been in Gig Harbor my whole life, third generation fisherman. And uh, yeah, grew up just wanting to be a fisherman, I guess, <laughs> at a young age and uh, started going out when I was 13 on Puget Sound up in the San Juan Islands and yeah like my brother said my dad passed away at a fairly young age so we kind of were fortunate enough to keep doing it and with a lot of help with some local families here in Gig Harbor and things just kind of kept going that direction and we still uh, fish you know I've fished California for squid and sardines on the Washington and Oregon coast uh, Fishing salmon at Prince William Sound, southeast. Uh, fish Dungeness crab on the Washington coast. So right now I'm just kind of doing the crab on the coast and uh, fishing up in southeast or Prince William Sound for salmon and just kind of enjoying uh, life, you know. And it's been a yeah, been a great life here. It's uh, like a grandfather came over from the island of Broch, Sue Martin, and I think 1913. I'm accurate on that and uh, it's pretty awesome got a chance to go there a couple years ago and see it which was pretty incredible and, and, uh, and people have asked us too what, what we want to do when we grow up like it's a hobby that fishing isn't actually a career so we tell them that we are grown up and <laughs> the best part I think when people ask you what you uh, if you would have done something else what would you rather have done and there's actually nothing I would have rather have done than what we're doing and he said with the, the families that it's a close community and we're everybody wants to be the best when we're fishing and it's kind of cutthroat but I think Gig Harbor's uh, pretty well known for if there's someone in trouble they help so we're pretty fortunate yeah, to have absolutely. people that especially when our father passed away that kind of took us under our wing and looked out for us and so it's a community that really cares and it's the industry that really cares and it's uh, if you had to do it all over again I would do the exact same thing yeah, I think too part of our, like as a kid in Gig Harbor, your part of your routine from uh, after school was to to go down to the docks or there was more activity and a lot of the fishermen if they're hanging nets in the spring and you're welcome, you know, as part of a your childhood was to you're welcome to go, you know, see what was going on yeah. and to visit and you're around a lot of the. I look back now and I, you know, a lot of the experiences I had I didn't realize it at the time, but it was, you know, now it's pretty incredible because you spent time with some of the with the old timers or it was just it was just your everyday life you didn't think much of it but it's you know it was for myself as a kid it was kind of a routine just the waterfront you know to be and to be welcomed you know it was a small town and everybody knew everybody so it was just it was a great sa great childhood it was know? safe you know Sa it was very safe safe and good yeah. and, see you know, now I'm an old timer damn it <laughs> I think we're all getting. I can't the old believe timers. it. Yeah, for sure. And I still want to go out when it's opportunity arises. You know, you, you just it 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 stays with you. And when I'm out on the boat, if I even if I go with Andy or something out here, yeah, as, exactly. As a, yeah. as, an, as a non-crew member, but just come out with them. My eyes are on the water constantly. I'm looking for the fish and looking at the tide and t talking back and forth. Of, you know, hey, what, what could we do different or better? Or you know, it's just it's it's yeah. Like those it's, were the good yeah, old days. Now they we, a, we get crews and they look at their Facebook account and they look at yeah. well, yeah. So, like Mike is a good example. He 
fall fish a few years ago when he was working at Crowley, he had some time off because he's got the fishing bug, he likes to fish. And so I was lucky enough to have him come out and run the skiff for me, but it was, it was a real joy because you have a professional, somebody that has done it their whole life and to come work together. And we had, a, we had a lot of fun. I mean, it was a, it was a great time because yeah. you're dealing with somebody that's passionate about fishing and that's more experienced in a lot of the stuff than I am, but we're working together and having a good, it was, like I said, a, we had a great time fishing. Yeah. I, I'll never forget that. Maybe, yeah. maybe he'll do it again sometime. I'd if like I could to talk it into. Yeah, I fished with Nikki Jerkovich one fall, and you, and yeah, it was just any chance I get, I'm going to go. Yeah, a lot of fun. So, but yeah. this boat here was built here, Scancy Shipbuilding in 1926, and it's been through a lot of upgrades, and it's been a lot. The guy that we got it from, uh, Nick Fahey lives up by Anacortes area and he donated it to the boat shop and he's put a lot of a lot into this boat and, uh, and he just loved the, the looks of it it's a classic there's not too many like this around anymore and and so he it was in, it was in need of a lot of work and he did it spent money on it which you know the fishery didn't warrant that much money to be spent but it was like his baby, you know, so. You do become so, fond of these boats. Yeah. So like you said, it, it's, he, they're telling me to get rid of my wood boat. And I've had it for 30 some years and you love it. Yeah. So you just yeah. don't want it. I don't want anybody else to touch it. So it, uh, as he says, the money does, the boat doesn't warrant the money, but it's like a, it's like a bad child. You still take care of him. Yeah, so. pretty much. Yeah, and it's, Obviously, from looking at the boat and the shape it's in, it's amazing how when something's taken care of it, how incredible, because it's still a, I mean, the boat's beautiful and maintained and hopefully will be around for a long time, but oh, pretty, it's got, it's pretty got, great piece of history right here. It's got 95 years in already. Pretty incredible. Yeah. Well, we tie up. As soon as we start tying up, people walk by, God, that's a beautiful boat. You know, I mean, that happens constantly. It's, it's amazing. It's a classic. Oh, for you know, sure. Boats look different now. They're different designs, but this is that old classic design that we all grew up with. You know, so it's still, it's so it's fun to have one to look at. You know, and I get to drive it. It gets me. Well, Mike's the only guy I think that knows how to drive it. We would, <coughs> it would take us half a day, I think, to figure out how to drive this thing. He's got more of the old skills. It's not user friendly. Let me no. tell you. <laughs> Jeez. Well, well we always Nick, tell him that. Nick Tarabocha told me. He said. Don't try to be above average. He says, you've got to try to be high boat. You've got to shoot for high boat. You know, if you don't make it, that's something, but don't be shooting for even above average. What don't. do you say though too about corking? His mother, brother, <laughs> sister, sister yeah. don't matter. <laughs> Cork him. <laughs> yeah, he's a tough dude and a good fisherman. But yeah, that's what he told me. Don't ever shoot for being above average. He said, that's no good. I actually shoot for being average now because it's really hard to, uh, I mean, you have to really be um, aggressive. There's that's, some young kids now. That's because that, you're old, Nick. Yeah, well, <laughs> you're getting old, too. They're just smarter. I, just, I gave up. But. Yeah. Well, that is the thing, too, is you had, it's tough. I think there was one time in my career, like, say, salmon fishing, I, I think I thought I was good, but then... That didn't last very long. And then some of the younger generation now, I mean, they're, that's why I, I've always said that I used to look at certain fishermen and say, well, how can they just go there and, and just kind of be happy with that and work? And, you know, I thought they were kind of laid back. And I used to think to myself, like, how, how could you do that? But then I find myself, that's who I am now. You know, I said, now I get it because I find myself thinking, you know, I'm okay with that. There's a lot of the younger generation. Some of the kids nowadays are they're so more advanced and they're they're faster and they're they're smarter, and which is cool. I mean, I it makes me feel like I'm. I guess I'm getting to that age where, you know, it's not as important. I guess it should be, but lots of the families in Gig Harbor. A lot of them are from Broch, but uh, also there's a tremendous number from Permuda, which the Busich family. Lavrovich, Malich, uh, Smirsich uh, family. Um, I can't think of all the other families that were from Bermuda, but 
uh, quite a few. So, and uh, that's a very tiny little island. Now, Sao Martin's a tiny little town of what three, four hundred people, but Permut is like an island of sixty-five, seventy-five people. Mm. Yet they came here, and they, uh, a lot of them, produced. You know, and then my mother's side came from the island of Malat, which is close to Permuda. And I found uh, in my family research that I'm related to Mike Scrivenich. Uh, his great great my great 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 grandfather far back was named Scrivenich and uh, I discovered I was related to people from the island of Susak which is where the Scriveniches are from so it uh, it's fun to do genealogical research uh, on Croatia it's very hard but it's fun I enjoy the hell out of it so sorry about that <laughs> no. yeah so we're all related we all played here when we were kids uh, yeah, playing here as kids seems like we're growing up. We were and trying to get to what our fathers were doing. They were fishermen. We couldn't go fishing, so we, we pretended to be fishermen. We made nets. And yeah. We roll all over the waters here, and uh, you know, to try and catch fish with our nets. And yeah. I remember, and we spent our whole childhood life right on this bay, and yeah. I remember uh, when our mothers wanted us for for any reason, they would just get on the porch and yell, scream, and we <laughs> would we would hear them anywhere on this bay, because in those days it was quiet here. It wasn't, you yeah. Know, it's not the noisy here now. There was a lot of family, a lot of a lot of us around the same age, and we do a lot of family things that to the Tacoma. Croatians would come out and uh, have, they'd play cards with, they'd get together with the, my mm -hmm. grandparents and they'd have card games and get together once a week. So they, they were real tight with, with Tacoma and Gig Harbor. So we got to know a lot of the families from Tacoma also. The Sioux Martin Club. Yeah, they had a Sioux Martin Club. Yeah. It was an offshoot of the Sobs. It was a club, Tacoma immigrants and Gig Harbor immigrants that came from Sue Martin, Brach, and they formed their own little club. And they would get together once a month. Sometimes they'd play cards. They'd be at your grandma's house. Yeah. And down our house. Yeah. That was that was fun. And they were always well dressed. I remember that as a oh, little kid. Oh gosh, yeah. Dressed to the hilt that all the time. The men always were wearing suits and the women were all dressed up suits and the men were white suits and ties. And, mm -hmm. and uh <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was something that we kind of took for granted. Then as we got older, it just it kind of went by the wayside with yeah. the rest of the generation. Do you remember some of those old parties they would have? I mean, they'd always end up singing, singing mm -hmm. Croatian songs. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And I remember I would come down to the dock and fill needles when we, uh, earlier they talked about it on the docks. But they would fill needles to repair the nets. And uh, my dad was there. and. The, whole crew they're all Croatians and one person would just start humming and then, then all the what sudden the words would start and pretty soon they all re interrupted and start singing all at the same time some Croatian mm -hmm. song I thought it was kind of cool it was cool yeah I yeah. thought they were nuts but <laughs> it was kind of cool and every winter yeah. when the men came home one of the things I did was uh, uh, they'd order a, a truckload of grapes from California, and uh, usually it was like a uh, you know, big delivery truck size and stacked to the hilt and full of boxes of grapes, wooden boxes of grapes, and my dad would get his share and he'd... Blaschko. You know, yeah. That was the guy's name to haul them over, Blaschko. Yeah, and he'd haul, and, he, and they'd you know, get his load and, and uh, you know, go down the basement and crush them in an old tub, and, and then we had a wine press, and. Uh, uh, one of the things I remember about that was uh, uh, he'd, uh, he wanted to squeeze every last drop of, gra every last drop of juice out of the grape. So he'd put the wine press uh, on, on something and, and uh, jack, put a jack up against the uh, main beam of the house and start jacking, jacking down on the wine, you know, but at the same time was lifting the floor of the house inside until my mother would start yelling at him to stop lifting the, <laughs> lifting the house up, you know, because of, Everything was, you know, everything was uneven up there. The chairs were all uneven, and all that stuff. So, you'd bend the floor before he'd stop jacking on the grapes, yeah. squeezing every drop he could. The first blessing of the fleet. Uh, this is something I believe the the ladies' business association got started uh, back in dancing. Dancing, yeah, started it right. 
and uh, she convinced, and they convinced all the fishermen uh, back then who were getting ready for the season that uh, the part of our holiday, ha harbor holidays, was in the end of May or the beginning of June, just before all the boats left, that we should have a blessing of the fleet, send them up north. And so that year, the very first year, uh, I remember uh, about 70 boats showed up. And uh, we had beautiful photographs of it. Uh, and I remember being on uh, the Elector with uh, uh, Tony Scrivenich and uh, the Scrivenich family. And uh, every family in Gig Harbor had a boat back then. So it was very, uh, a lot, a wonderful holiday. Boats were decorated with flags and, and all the families were on the boats and everybody kind of partied and we paraded outside the bay and threw a wreath in for the fishermen who died at sea. And uh, of course the priest was uh, uh, one about, uh, on, I don't know if he did it the very first year, but he... Uh, he did, we did it differently. We, he yeah, stayed on the dock. He stayed on the dock and he blessed all the boats mm -hmm. and said prayers on the loudspeaker and no one could hear him because it was mm -hmm. so, you know, such a big... And this was in front of Ansich Park. And uh, they had, they've had blessings of the fleet for... It's, yeah, every year since then. Every we year since then. There was then. a number of years. Harbor holidays got to be a little bit too much holiday for our, our local city officials. So it kind of got toned down and then we went to the Port of Tacoma used to do a blessing and we've got and then we did our own blessing for a number yeah. of years but we've done it every year yeah. uh, except last year we didn't because of because of COVID it was the first year in the right. number of years that we have it and it's down to the boat of course the boats are le a little bit less now than it used to be years ago and also it's everybody's kind of diverse because the salmon season down in Puget Sound here is has gotten we don't get very many days so uh, boats are in Alaska and California and all over so it's hard to get the whole fleet that's still around here to get a number of boats we'll get as many as a dozen to 15 boats for the blessing so mm -hmm. and it's still a neat deal and actually we tie up we kind of anchored out right here but uh, we're going to try to get it done this year and I think we're going to go back to Ansich again here we are at the Scansi Net Shed. This is our final stop on our three stop visit here in Gig Harbor. And inside we'll take a tour and uh, we also will be visiting with some locals to share their stories about what it was like growing up in Gig Harbor. We hope you enjoy. Hi, I'm Andy Babich, the president of the Scansi Net Shed. And Jim? Uh, yeah, I'm uh, Jim Franich. I'm the vice president of the Scansi Net Shed Foundation. Uh, lifelong resident of Gig Harbor. Started commercial fishing when I was uh, 15 years old with uh, Nick Jerkovich Sr. going to Southeast Alaska. Got a lot of good memories from that and uh, just real proud that uh, I can be part of this foundation here with Andy and the rest of our board to um, be able to offer this location to the public so they can come in and, and really get a sense of um, some tradition about what Gig Arbor was like in the old days. Yeah, and I, like I said, I'm kind of the same background as Jim, commercial fisherman, still actively fishing, and uh, kind of it's been great to be involved with the shed. We, we uh, have a great group of people that do tons of work to keep this place open. So normally we're open in the summertime for the public to come view it and see learn about the history of the shed and its background i think it's built in 1910 and the scancy brothers lived in a house just up here and that still exists today and the shed uh, was for building nets and persanes back in the when the family had the fishing vessel the avalon and then now we're lucky enough to be able to come down here and share stories and and uh, let the rest of the public and the people in the area come down and see what it's like to get actually inside. It's over the water and it's kind of a unique uh, place to see. So we're happy to be a part of that. Hi, I'm Nadine and I'm Scrivenich. Grew up here and uh, my parents lived right down on the end of the street down here, right across from the Stanish Grocery where we always went and got our food. Mm -hmm. And we always worried about the, the fishermen making enough money so we could eat. Yeah, because uh, eating Absolutely. was very, yeah, it was important. And I have two brothers, Don Scrivenich, who passed away about a few years ago, and then my younger brother, who is 11 years younger than me, Mike, who made the pasta bajol today, which I, was delicious. And Phyllis and I 
we had a lot of fun. <laughs> and whatever she said, I did. Absolutely. She is the leader. <laughs> yeah. So And our and fathers I, knew each other. And our, around our, all, yeah, all yeah, winter our dads were good friends and great enemies. In the summer. In the summer. When they, they were fished, the, they were great enemies. Yeah. yeah. But in, in it, the winter, best of friends. Best yeah. of friends. I don't think there were any grudges held at any time with any of them. But fishing is competitive and that's what you do. You try to catch the most. You're catching fish for your family, for your livelihood. You only have so much time you can do it and you do the best that you possibly can. So. I'm Phyllis Tarabocha Orbeck and I'm one of the gang. I'm Christine Allen. My mom was the Croatian on, in my family. Her last name was Ostojic. So. And I'm Janie Stanich Dempsey. So I'm a composite of two families here in Deep Harbor, the Castelland, which was my mother was from, and the Stanichs, of course, which I married, I, excuse yeah. me, which I it was born into. Yeah. Um, my dad had the fishing boat, the Welcome, and we also owned the grocery store here. But it was a good childhood because when I think back, where else can you, one end of the block where I lived was Nadine, the other end of the block was Joanne Mollich, so I had two people, meaning, Okay, if I was, we were going roller skating, I could go down by a Nadine's, or I could go over by Joanne's, and pretty soon, we, and it wasn't and the And you were in the skates, middle. And I was yeah. in the middle. It was the key turn, you know, that was a yeah. big thing during those days. Uh, I mean, it was just some of those things that we did as a kid. Then uh, the other thing was, if somebody had a date, you knew who had a date because the light was out on the porch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I never heard that one. I never heard that yeah, one. No. And then, and then the I remember <laughs> Boris Gansey, we all called him Buzz. Yeah. Well, he was like <laughs> handsome, handsome, and with the jacket, with the collar up, baby blue convertible. And the yeah. yeah, and yeah. he took Mama Nadilka shopping at Stanich's, and us girls it's were her uncle store. We yeah, were my watching uncle him and, and my dad. He's sitting, looking really cool, real cool, really cool, and we, we were, were ice, all, we were skating, roller skating. Yeah, and then he was quite kind of embarrassed because mama yeah. came out of stand she says boris boris you want the ice cream cone? <laughs> he lost all his coolness at yeah. that time <laughs> he stood in the car and he went oh. <laughs> he but wanted we, to evaporate we, were, we yeah. were still in love with him yeah that's okay yeah. yeah so when the fishermen left we all would go to the dock when they were down on this end of the harbor and uh, wave goodbye, kisses and everything. Everybody was crying because they knew it would be, you know, three months before um, we saw our dads again. And uh, so then we'd hop in the car after the boat started and run all the way down to the end of the road here and get out and wave our last goodbye and they'd all toot their horns. That was, uh, that was kind of the, the sad part too when they when they blew their horns before the they left. The but it was it was a woman's world in Gig Harbor the when the fit men left the because yeah. my mom and I would um, do stuff around the house. She always baked every day. We'd have coffee at three o'clock at somebody's house. Yep. Yeah, and Teresa and I would always show up for yeah. the cake. That was the coffee hour. Yeah, the coffee hour. And um, so we'd tell, figure out where the cars were and you know go to that person's house. But like I said, we get up in the morning in, in the summertime, no school. Teresa and I would play. We'd play school a lot. All day. She and, I, she and I ended up being teachers, but we'd play at one another's house. And when dinner time came and our mothers wanted us home, they'd just get on the porch and yell. And we'd hear, the, hear their voice and come back for dinner. Oh, yeah. So there was never any, you know, my mother would call and say, Teresa's here. She's no need lunch. of a telephone. You know, so your mother wouldn't worry that she wasn't <laughs> eating. But how idyllic a, a, a time to grow up that was, just to be... Um, it was a close-knit neighborhood. It was a close-knit neighborhood. It was being raised by a village, in a way. Yeah. yeah. Remember? We, we yeah. Take, and then we went on oh, your dad's Phyllis boat. Oh, Phyllis has a good one in Friday Harbor. Well, I want to tell the one on, on your dad's boat, on the Lecter. Oh, okay. Eunice and you and I went on the Elector, and uh, we decided to do a Comedia for the men on the boat and so we put on the slickers and, and the boots and the boots 
and we did uh, Dan Mariana. And danced on the deck. Danced on the deck in uh, Vinsa, 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 Tsa. And we entertained the crew who thought it was kind of strange. <laughs> but we had a lot of fun doing it. Oh, this is how we do it. We're the Sansigo sisters. And they went, what? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Far away in San Sego, happy, happy San Sego. We grew the lingo like a lingo in a how what? I don't know. San Sego. I don't even. I don't Seagull. remember that. Yeah, who used to sing that, didn't he? He, he did, but I don't remember it. Do my name is Jack Busich, Jack Dominic Busich Jr., and this is my lovely wife Patricia Busich, who used to be Patricia Kesich. I imported her from Tacoma, <laughs> but uh, she went to stadium, but that wasn't her fault. <laughs> but, I loved uh, it. Yeah, but I, uh, well, I'm but almost 95 years old, and I was born and raised in Gig Harbor, and part of the Ross clan, I guess you'd call it, the Ross Busich outfit. But growing in Gig Harbor, is, as far as I was concerned, as, as a young boy, it was probably the greatest place to be. We, uh, it was friendly. We all the kids played together. We made uh, we didn't our fa folks didn't have money to buy toys, so we made our own kites. We made our own scooters. Uh, we just made things rubber guns. We used to steal every rubber tire. That you, in those days, you had tires, rubber tires in your deals, and we'd go down to the Robies, had a garage down here, and Renz had the motors there, and, and we get the inner tubes and cut them up, and then we make rubber guns, and we have wars. And stuff, but with, the way it was when we played, if we played up on the hill with the Gilliches, the mother would always say, lunch is ready, they'd feed us. No matter where you were, they'd feed you. And uh, so, and that's the way the community was. It was a close-knit community, and we had a lot of uh, parties, get-togethers, and uh, we'd have picnics, and uh, uh, the one big picnic we had is uh, was June 3rd, and i never forget it, but Ralph Sulich and I, we built a cement wall uh, to barbecue area, and my dad and them and they they carved out poles to put the lambs on. And I had uh, Arnold Scrimmage, Ralph Sulich, Martin Marin, my dad, Johnny Stanage, and who else? One more. I think Martin Scrimmage too. But I built this up in the Crescent Valley Pick, and I built a fire in it. And Ralph and I went up three o'clock in the morning, and we started the fire with hardwood. I had nine lambs, and Adam Ross and my dad and Arnold Scrivenich, they put all the lambs on the sticks and stuff. And I, in fact, I still got the sticks. But, but So I had all the old timers turning the lambs. And we had this great big picnic over at the park. And they were just getting ready to cut the lambs. And I, I barbecued 300 pounds of sirloin tip on a rotisserie. Just so when we started to feed them, we had one of the biggest rainstorms you've ever seen. And we had the old community hall up in the corner there. And we were just cutting chunks of meat out and giving it to the families and run up to the community hall to picnics. But uh, yeah. and one of the things back there growing up, our families were really close knit. We'd go, we'd, we'd all get the whole family would go and my, my brother and my sisters, we'd go say down to Larwich's, which were relatives and they lived right up here in the street. And we'd go down to visit them at the night and as kids would play in the basement and. And in those days, all the old folks, they did all their canning of peaches, pears, cherries, and you name it. And, uh, and we'd have those get-togethers. And you, all, you always had a lot of get-together type things on picnics and stuff. It was just, uh, I'd call Gig Harbor just like one big family. I mean, that's how close Gig Harbor was. <laughs> well, my dad left Bermuda when he was 13 years old. And he on a sailing ship as a cabin boy and he went around the horn and came into San Francisco and in San Francisco he went to work in Colorado in the coal mines for a while and then left there and then he ended up coming ended up in Gig Harbor and his uh, brother John came here and the one and one brother went to uh, uh, South Buenos America Buenos, Buenos Aires Buenos South America so we have religious now there my wife is in contact with them quite often and uh, so my dad then met my mother, which was was a Ross, and that's how we got related to the whole deal. And uh, and my son did go back to Bermuda on the island, 
I'm going to visit the visitor over there. But uh, I don't know. It, it just Gigarver is a unique little town. I guess it, 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 it's so unique that everybody found us, and now they're all moving in, <laughs> which ain't good. <laughs> well, it's good. I, I, I always said if you, it's so good, they're going to find us someday. So enjoy your life while you can. But plan things in. Don't plan them out. And maybe you'll get the things that you'll enjoy and keep.